You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. got some news from the league office that uh, Georgia and Tennessee, their future home and home schedules with uh, Oklahoma uh, have been disrupted, obviously, with um, Oklahoma coming into the conference. Uh, so what does that mean for LSU's future home and home with Oklahoma that's scheduled for 2027 and 2028? Uh, here to talk about that is LSU Executive Deputy Athletic Director, Verge Osbury. George now. Verge, we appreciate it. How are you? Doing great, Matt. How are you doing today? Doing really well. Um, let's just start with sort of an obvious one. Um, so. With Oklahoma coming into the league, what does this do for LSU's future home and home in 2027 and 2028? You know, Matt, when this decision was made to let Oklahoma and Texas come to the SEC, we were prepared for it. And uh, we started working ahead with uh, some of our networks, ESPN, some other people and other schools trying to find a replacement. Because we figured it out that, you know, if they're going to be in the conference and still say in 2025, then that we have them in a home and home. That game would, would not take place. Also, you know, we were aware we was playing Texas, plan on bringing them back, but the COVID years happened. It was planning on bringing them back sometimes in the future, and that part disappeared also. Um, could, just I guess as a point of clarification, could, because I don't know if this is an SEC rule, could you play a conference opponent in a non-conference game like they do in baseball, meaning could you keep Oklahoma on the schedule and just have it as a non-conference game even though they're in the same conference? No, that won't happen, and, and they, they had notified us about that before, and uh, we, we, we were prepared for it. And the good thing about it, we have a few more years than Georgia and Tennessee have. Uh, so that was a 27-28 time. With all the realignment taking place, there are going to be a lot of changes and a lot of schedules for a lot of power five conferences. So it pretty worked out pretty well for us, and I think we have two opponents that we're working with right now to fill in those spots and to have some good football games. Uh We'll go. We'll look ahead in just a second. But you also mentioned uh, the Texas return game. We all know what happened. Play there in 2019. They were supposed to come here. COVID hit in 20, and the game didn't happen. So, how close were you all in discussions to a, a return game? You know, we were talking to Texas and Chris Del Conte, their athletic director, about getting that game back on the schedule. And to be honest with you, Matt is going to be way out. Probably the way they play Oklahoma and that neutral side game that that set up, and that's going to change also how that game is played. Uh, we were looking way into the 2030s. You know, we look at the football schedule where I'm at right now, we're all the way out to 2032, and that's Utah State. You have Arizona State after that with a home-and-home. Home. All those games were Utah home-and-home home games that we had set up already. And Oklahoma game was the only game that we had there that was set as a home-and-home. Home. We knew with the realignment this was going to take place. So with Texas and Oklahoma, you know, we don't know how that's going to be. You know, one thing I talked to you about earlier, you can see on how many games you're going to have, eight or nine, whenever the SEC schedule comes out, that's going to determine a lot about how we go with future scheduling. And we're just kind of in a whole pattern right now. You know, we have the Power Five opponents. But before we start scheduling other teams, we need to figure out that before you go ahead and schedule. And then you realize that you might only have six home games other than seven, which we have to have at LSG. So in 2025, that's it's, so this is a good point. So in 2025, Texas and Oklahoma will – will be in the league. Correct. You have a conference game already, a non-conference game, excuse me, already at Clemson. So yeah. how does how does this affect, um, I, I guess, the format, Verge, which maybe you don't have much control over, but, for example, if it's a nine-game schedule, there's going to be years where you play five road and four home. Well, Correct. if that's a year where you're on the road, say, against Clemson in 2025, I mean, you're kind of at a disadvantage. So can can you lobby the league to have? Yes. Correct. That's the correct word to use. We're gonna be, I think they're going to look at our schedules where we are. You just let them know, look, we need to have the seven home games. And you're correct. You know, you have the five, you know, games on the road. If you go to nine, you know, I'm not saying if. It's a big if. You can stay at eight. But if you go to nine, then, yeah, that could change you and flip a schedule where – you're preparing to have seven home games, and now you're down to six. So those are the things that we all got to work through, and I think there'll be a lot of discussions taking place here in our meetings in the future about how we figure out the scheduling going forward. Verge, is there a possibility still, and forgive me, just I know there's a lot of re meetings going on and, and all the deals with TV partners. Is there still a possibility of Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC in 2024? You know, we, they're not discussing that with us at this time. Uh, right now, the commissioner says 2025. 
But yeah. like, never, never say never, Matt. That hadn't come down to us yet. Yeah, and the reason I asked, Verge, is I mean, I mean, you know this, but for the benefit of the audience, twenty twenty four, you've got four non conference games. So you've got SC, yeah. Rice, UCLA, the return trip, mm-hmm. and South Alabama. Like theoretically, you might have to drop too many games. <laughs> yeah, you have too many games. So what do you do? You know, you know, that's the thing we did, and, and we've been talking to some people about moving some things. If that was to happen, we, we don't think it's going to happen. But we have had conversations with people. Now, in the future, you're right. There's a lot of times we have gone out and scheduled other games, especially with FBS schools that's not in the Power Five, and how you get out of those contracts. And we worked some things with our general counsel's office on campus. Wording we put in contracts. You know, you change the word in all the contracts, uh, epidemic, pandemics. And now all of a sudden, scheduling conflict, especially by the conference, because you don't get caught out there with too many games and you get to buy somebody out for $1.5 to $1.7 million. So those are things that we're putting in contracts. So if we go to nine games, there might be an adjustment. But right now, we're kind of in a whole pattern, Matt. And not going down to scheduling games or scheduled games, which you don't know is going to happen until pretty much probably next year. Yeah. It, I mean, clear pitch on this. I mean, you you are juggling a lot of balls in the air, trying to figure out how this thing is going to work out, especially when you with the unknown of a of an of a conference schedule. How how many games is? I mean, it's it's pretty important to know how many you need to schedule. So that's right. Is something else? And just for the record, let's say uh, let's assume that the league does go to nine conference games. Mm-hmm. Is there still? Will it still be a mandate from the league, or do you still plan to schedule a Power Five non-conference, which would be ten Power Five games? You know, our plan is. You know, we're talking to Scott and I talking together. We plan on doing that. We want to keep. You know, look, those big games mean a lot, and I think you have to have them. Uh, I, I think everybody in the conference probably, you know, the big schools. We're going to keep that Power Five opponent. Uh, I, I want to play Clemson. I want to play USC, UCLA. Uh, we want to play uh, Arizona State. We want to play Utah. Whoever, you know, put on the schedule, we want to play other Power 5 opponent. It's, I think it's a great game for our, for our fans. I think it's a great plan for LSU. And I think we have to play, you know, those those big premium schools. You know, we're about the only conference that doesn't have a, a nine-game conference schedule right now. And I think that's important that we keep the Power 5 opponent uh, from another conference on our schedule. Uh, Verge Osbury is with us for a couple of minutes talking future football scheduling. Um, the next two years, uh, you'll have neutral site games. You'll be in Orlando and then in Las Vegas to take on USC. As you mentioned, you're scheduled up through 2032. It's just hard to to look more than a decade out, obviously. But are you in discussions about neutral sites, or is the, sh- the focus shifted to home and home? I think everything is on the table. And, you know, you talk about that 2020 uh Four schedule. We have a, a big home in UCLA is coming back to Baton Rouge, right. and we have USC in that year. So I think you look at combinations. You look at what you could get on the schedule. You know, with Oklahoma doing, even what they did, when they did, you know, we're still behind. That's in 27 and 28. You know, you usually want to have about a six year window of Power Five opponent schedule. So when they when we saw this coming, we knew it to start making changes. So, you know, I can't promise it's going to be a neutral site or home and home, but it's bottom line, we're just trying to get the right opponent at the right place. And just get the games in place so we could have two power five opponents when that schedule changes. Um, is there still a plan to try to get a Louisiana school on the schedule each year? See, it's uh, you know, it's kind of look at ahead. Uh, Grambling next year, no Louisiana school in twenty four, but then Louisiana Tech in twenty five. After that, is there still a, a, an intention of, of getting the Louisiana schools on the schedule? Yes, Matt. You know, the way the schedule works right now, like you said, if we go to eight or go to nine, we definitely have that power five opponent on there, but we definitely want a Louisiana school. We want to keep the money to stay Louisiana. We think it's important. We're that flagship institution. I think it's great that every young man who plays football in Louisiana has the opportunity to play a game in Tiger Stadium. We think that's very, very important. So we're going to do that, and we might be making some moves in 2024 and uh, get a Louisiana opponent in there also. But that's something that we want to do that we started doing and if the schedule and state the same way and all the schools keep scheduling the same way, that's something we want to do. You mentioned 24, so that would mean either Rice or South Alabama, their spot would be moved as I'm looking at it. Uh, is there a time frame where you're looking at, at some type of announcement there or finality? I, I think that's going to be in the next six months here. We've been doing some conversations. we started conversations with some people already about moving some things around and how we do it. And I think uh, about six months we have an answer for those, okay. those uh, schedules. Hey, man, uh, Les never wanted to play Michigan, right? I mean, that was always <laughs> Les's thing. 
<laughs> um, you call in South Bend? Look, because not only Brian Kelly, but man, you know, there's there's an Osbury up there. Going to be. Yeah. You know, we, we, we talk to everybody. You know, Matt, one thing about us, we never ran playing anybody. And uh, in Michigan, you know, my good friend Ward Manuel, who's a New Orleans guy, played mm-hmm. at the University of Michigan, brother Martin guy. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, we've spoken about doing some things in the future and just how they schedule falls and high falls with Notre Dame on the schedule. But, you know, we look at everybody and trying to get those 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 marquee quality games. Like I said, some going to be neutral sites, some going to be home at home. Sometimes you might have both. And we've had great years by having both at times. And uh, the better opponents you play, the better your team's going to play. I know somebody asked me the other day about the, you know, the zero week. And that's, that's just something that we're not going to do at LSU. And I don't think it made a difference in our game in Florida State one way or the other. Uh, we had an opportunity to win the game, and those things happen. But we're not going to do that. We're going to maintain the scheduling format we have. You know, if we go to eight games, stay at eight, that's fine. We go to nine, you know, go to nine. We're going to continue to keep that Power 5 opponent on that schedule. Virgil, by the real one point of clarification on Week Zero. What Don't you have to file a waiver to play a Week Zero? What goes into that if you were going to do that? Which obviously that you're not, but yeah. If the team is playing Hawaii or you playing Hawaii, that's how it happens. It gives you that week zero because of the travel schedule. It gives you that week zero game. That's something that you know we're not interested in doing, and we want to stay with our normal traditional schedules that we have. Okay, so that's just for the SEC. So like Vanderbilt going to Hawaii, not like because like Florida State well, played Duquesne. So that's a, a yeah, that's a but, conference deal. But Duquesne is going to Hawaii. I feel that's that's it. If they, the opponent you're playing oh. going to Hawaii, you can have that week zero. You say. Okay. Yeah, so the same, that's how that came about. If they're going to Hawaii, they're playing Hawaii, then you get that week zero, no matter what Power 5 conference you're in, to get the week zero game. Okay. So um, you're going overseas. If you play, play like Nebraska and Northwestern, if you're playing in Ireland, you get that week zero. Right. And it's so weird, too, because Nebraska came, they played in Ireland and then played the next week. It, it was so strange that they didn't take that week off after playing that game, but I, who am I to, to make their schedule for them? Um, Verge Osbury, Executive Director of External Relations and uh, Executive AD there out at LSU. Verge, we appreciate uh, the time and the info, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.